Rahim. So let's start off, inshallah ta'ala, with the history of Abyssinia as a whole, the, the narration of Aisha radiallahu anha. She said that Najashi, and I want you guys to think about uh, movies that you've watched, all right, and try to compare to this story. She says that Najashi's father was the king. And so he was the Najashi, basically. Najashi was the son of the Najashi, which is hereditary rule, right? But Ashama was the only son. So there's the king, the Najashi, and he has one son, and that son is Ashama. The brother of the king, who would be the uncle of Najashi, all right, the uncle of Ashama. Are you guys getting confused with the names? All right. The brother of the father of Ashama, who was the Najashi of the time, the ruler of the time, being his uncle. Um, he had 12 sons. So you have the uncle with 12 sons, you have the king with one son. So the Abyssinians were afraid. Why were they afraid? You know, think about modern day monarchies and things of that sort. Well, there's only one son. So if, if something happens to that one son, the entire you know, rule, the entire monarchy is jeopardized. So they were very worried about what's going to happen. So they wanted to assassinate the father of Ashama. Right? The people plotted to assassinate the father of Ashama with his uncle. So his uncle was in on it. All right? So that the brother could become the ruler, while well, Ashama was too young. All right? Ashama, the only son, is very young. So they said, let's kill his father so that the rule will transfer to his brother, all right? so that he has 12 sons and, it can, you know, and, and the monarchy is stable that way. So while Ashama was still a young boy, they assassinated his father. His uncle plotted against his father, and the people plotted, and they killed his father. Now, He's still a young boy, and the uncle, who would become the Najashi, didn't want him to know. And this is hella real-life history. This isn't a Hollywood movie. It's really, it's really amazing. It's fascinating. He didn't want him to know that he killed his father, and he wanted to hide it from him. And so it was sort of like an uh, understood that he had nothing to do with it, and so on and so forth. The uncle becomes the king. He takes Ashama in with the rest of his children. All right? And the idea is now, well, the, 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 the rule of Abyssinia has transferred now to his uncle and to his kids. Now what ends up happening is that as he starts to grow up, he grows up with his uncle, and his uncle's like his father. He grows up with the, with the rest of his, with, with his cousins as if they're his brothers and so on and so forth. Ashama was so intelligent and so superior in intelligence to all the rest of the kids that people were afraid that he was going to figure out what happened. And he was going to dethrone his uncle, you know, and that everything was going to go back into chaos. So, and they also worried because he was so close to his uncle. Because he was so superior in his intelligence and everything like that, they were worried that Ashama was going to win over his uncle. And again, it was going to destabilize everything because he didn't have any kids. So what's going to happen? So those same people that plotted with him to kill, that plotted with the uncle to kill the ruler, they took him to the side and they said, look, He's about to figure out, and he might already know that you killed his father. So you need to kill him. Because if you don't kill him now, he's going he's gonna, to you know, rise up, he's going to retake the kingdom, and it's going to be chaos all over again. So the uncle, he said, look, I already killed his father. I'm not going to kill him. He was close to him. He said, but here's what we'll do. This was his mercy. He said, I'll deport him, and we'll put him in slavery. So we'll get him out of here. We'll sell him in, into slavery somewhere out of this land, so he'll go somewhere else and everything will be, you know, settled because he can't, he can't unseat me then. And, you know, that was his, you know, subhanAllah, it's like the brothers of Yusuf, Islam, right? <laughs> the guy with mercy says, let's not kill him, let's just throw him into a well where he'll be picked up and he'll be enslaved. So that's his idea of mercy is let's just sell him into slavery. We don't have to kill him and that's not necessary. So what ends up happening is he confides in his 12 sons. He says, listen, and the number is 12 also, subhanAllah. He confides in his 12 sons and he says, listen, capture him, take him to the slave market, sell him, and make sure that the person you sell him to is from a faraway land, so he's not going to be around this area. So the brothers capture Ashama. They take him to the slave market. They sold him for 600 dirhams to a man that came from overseas, so he actually was on a boat. So the man takes Ashama, chains him up, puts him on his boat, and he starts to go out uh, away, from, uh, away from the land of Abyssinia. Are you guys following the story yet? <laughs> All right. When they set out, 
There are all kinds of clouds, but there is no rain. All right? So because there is no rain coming, the people start to suffer from a drought. So they asked the king, who's the uncle of Ashama, they said, go out and do istisqa, go out and ask Allah for rain. Remember, they're Christians. So go out and ask God for rain. So the uncle who's in charge, the emperor of Abyssinia, the Najashi of Abyssinia, he goes out and he makes dua with the people for rain. And suddenly a strike of lightning kills him. So he's dead. Now subhanAllah, when this man dies now, The kingdom passes on to his son, right? So one of his 12 sons has to become Najashi. All of his children, his 12 sons, were in con competence. And they didn't know what they were doing. So it became chaos because they were trying to figure out basically which one of these 12 sons is, is the lesser, is the, is the least. that can take over and that can continue to be the king. So the people got so frustrated with trying to, you know, with trying to figure things out uh, with the kids that they said, you know what, let's go, let's, let's go find Al-Sham and let's just put him in charge again. All right? So SubhanAllah, imagine this. They say, we have to rectify the situation. They go out and they start looking for al -Sham. So they, they, they start, at, you know, they ask, they, they, they start trying to find out who, who the guy was that bought him, where he was sold into slavery. They go to that man's land, they find him, they attack that man, they steal Ashama back. They bring him back to Abyssinia and they put him on the throne and put a crown on his head. <laughs> and they say, you're our king now. SubhanAllah, the turn of events, right? So, he's the king now. He's the Najashi now. And it's really amazing because what ends up happening is that master, the guy that bought him, okay? And the people are very happy because they know how intelligent Ashama is and they didn't want the kingdom now going to, the, to, the, to these 12 idiots. So they said, well, you have to be the king now. So he's the Najashi now. That master came back and he came to Najashi to complain. He said, look, I gave 600 dirhams. I don't know anything about your internal politics in Abyssinia, but I bought you as a slave. It's not fair. So, you know, you have to figure this out. And Najashi, he turns to the people and he says, look, he says, either you give him back his money or you give him back his slave. Allahu Akbar, look at the man's justice. And that's the Prophet ﷺ praised his sense of justice. He said, look, you sold me as a slave to him for 600 dirhams. Either give him back his money or give him back his slave to do justice. So they said, no, 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 we'll give him back his money. So they gave him back his 600 dirhams. And subhanAllah, lo and behold, you have this man who, whose father was murdered. And the murder of his father was hidden from him by his uncle. His uncle was killed. He was sold into slavery. The, the, the son of his uncle turned out to be incompetent. The people went and got him from slavery and put him back in a position of rule. Look at the decree of Allah, the Qadr of Allah. Why is this all happening? To pre prepare him for the Prophet ﷺ and for the Muslims that would come to his land. So this is the amazing Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Najashi assumes the rule and he's one of the most competent kings that in the history of Abyssinia. He establishes it economically. He manages to ward off all the enemies because he's allied again with the Romans in the face of the Persians. Um, he's known for his justice. He's known for his benevolence. And the Prophet ﷺ sends out a group of Sahaba to him that the grave of a Najashi was seen by many Muslims. Many Muslims passed by his grave and they went to visit him. And she says that multiple Sahaba testified to a nur that was coming from the grave of a Najashi. Allahu Akbar, subhanAllah. Multiple companions would see light coming from his grave. Uh, and this was a man who never met the Prophet.
who loved the Prophet to that level, who contributed so much to Islam. And so uh, Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala says, he's considered the best of the tabi'een. He's not a sahabi, he's a tabi'i. Technically speaking, he's a tabi'i. So he's con considered the best of the tabi'een. And I told you guys, Hollywood inspiration and movies and all of these things. Any of you guys guessed the movie that this inspired? So this is a fun fact, all right? The movie Lion King was inspired by the story of An-Najashi. In fact, uh, the original producer of the Lion King musical is an Ethiopian by the name Negus, <laughs> who's named Najashi. So the story of Mufasa and Simba and all that kind of stuff, it's basically uh, Najashi, except it's, it's lions and hyenas, okay? But subhanAllah, that's a true story that, that you know, uh, which we can tell our kids proudly that, you know, that Lion King was inspired by the story of this great man, Ashama, uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with him and, and with his sacrifices for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join us with him and the Prophet sallallahu and the companions in Jannah al-Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. Inshallah ta'ala will continue with